Welcome to our video lesson on number lines. Before we can talk about how we'll use number lines, I need to make sure you know what they are. Number lines are lines on which numbers are marked at intervals. Intervals, that might be a new word for you. Interval just means at a consistent amount or the same amount. So intervals means the same amount. All right, they can be vertical, which means up and down like this one. So this number line is vertical and it goes up and down. Or they can be horizontal like this one. There we go. Uh, they always go, or these ones go from least, so the least ones way down here, all the way up to the greatest. Down here we have the least, and then we have the greatest up here. The other thing about them is they increase by the same amount. That's what it means by an interval. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be one like these ones do. These ones you can see increase by one each time. We go from zero to one and one to two, two to three. But let's look at some different examples. Here I have a number line that instead of increasing by one, it increases by two. So you can see it starts at zero and then it goes to two, four, six, now we can still plot any number or find any number on this number line. It's just that it increases by two instead of increasing by one. Here we have another example. This number line increases by fives. So again, instead of going up by ones, it would go up by ones. You can count that there, or you can just count the fives. And one last example over here. Our number line over here is a vertical number line, and it goes up by twos. Okay, make sure you have everything on this page written down before you move on. When you're looking at number lines, you're going to have to be able to name points on them or spaces on the number line. To do that, you need to look at what interval the number line is going from. So let's look at this first one here. Our numbers are go increasing uh, by an amount of one each time. So from zero to one is one, one to two is one, two to three is one, and the other direction we get smaller. So if I go from three to two is one, two to one is minus one, one to zero is minus one, what will go between zero and negative two? That would be negative one because we're just going decreasing by one or moving by one each time. All right, the next one here. We have to fill in this blank here after the negative six. All right, I look at my number line and I can see that the interval or the space is one and that it's decreasing by one. So here, from negative six, I would fill this space in with negative seven. All right, the next number line is a little bit harder because we have fewer numbers to work with. But if we look at this space here, the one space we're given, to get from negative 10 to negative eight, that's a jump of two, not negative. That is a jump of two. So I know that this number line has to go from two. So if I go from negative 10 to negative eight, my next number would be negative six because I'm increasing by two. And then negative six increased by two would be negative four, increased by two, negative two, and then increase by two would give me zero, so I know my answer is correct. All right, this next one gets even harder. I'm gonna look at my spaces in between here. To get from 60 to 62, I'm moving by an amount of two. And this, and from 64 to 62, again, will be two. So from 60 to something else, I have to move two. And if I move two, I get 60, 59, 58. So this must be negative 58. And that makes sense because if I move two more, I would get negative 56. All right, and then our other blank back here, we move down by another two. So negative 64 would go to negative 66. This last one here, try it on your own first and then click play and you'll see the answer. All right, I looked here and saw that it decreased or the interval is 2. So we go from 40 to 42 to negative 44 
to negative 46 to negative 48. That's number five. All right, now we've talked about looking at number lines and how to interpret them. Now we need to talk about plotting points on them. What that means is drawing the point that you've been asked to on a number line. So we're going to do it on horizontal, vertical, uh, horizontal, horizontal number lines and vertical number lines. Let's plot the falling points on, the, on all the number lines. So the first point is negative 1. Now we need to plot, plot negative 1 on each of our number lines here. I'm going to start with our first one up here. Well, I can see that the 0 is in the middle, and it actually says negative 1 on there for me. So this is a really nice one to start with. And I'm going to put the dot. Oh, that's a little too big. That's better. I'm going to put the dot right over where the two lines cross. You don't want to put it above or below. That is incorrect. You need to put it right where the two lines cross, like that one. All right, let's look at our next number line. Oh. Our next number line down here. This number line is moving. Looking at this one here. This number line is its interval is two. But I need to find negative one. Do you see a negative one on the number line? I don't. But that doesn't mean we can't, there isn't a negative one there. It's just not labeled there. And I know that negative one is in between zero and negative two. So that means that negative one would be right here on my number line. All right, let's look at this number line over here. Again, we're trying to find negative 1. This is a vertical number line, so it means it goes up and down. And I can actually see negative 1 on this number line. And I'm going to put my dot right where the two lines cross. So there's my negative 1. All right, our last number line over here. I don't see negative 1 on there, so I'm going to have to think, what does it increase by? This is, oh, it's actually decreasing by 2 each time. And I know that negative 1 is in between 0 and negative 2, so I'll put my negative 1, I'll make that a little nicer, negative 1 right there. All right, let's do the next question. We've done negative 1s, and we did that in red, so I'll put red over it. Then we're going to do negative 5 next. Negative 5 we'll do in purple. All right, my first number line. I see negative 5 right there, so I am just going to put my point on it, plot it, and I am done. Okay, what about my second number line down below this one here? I don't see a negative 5 on that number line, but I remember that it moves by 2s. So I know that negative 5 would be between negative 4 and negative 6, so that's where I'm going to put my negative 5. My next number line over here, it's a vertical number line, but I actually see our negative 5 on it way down here, so I'm going to put my negative 5 right there. But I'm going to make sure that's nicely in the middle and centered. There we go. The last number line, again, it's moving by 2, so I don't see negative 5 on there, but I know that negative 5 becomes between negative 4 and negative 6, so I'm going to plot it right there. All right, now we've finished plotting negative 5. The next one is negative 1 and 5 tenths. Ooh, all right. So this is a decimal, and I don't see any decimals on any of my number lines, which makes me a little bit nervous. But let's try our best. All right, I know that negative 1 and 5 tenths will be halfway between negative 1 and negative 2, which means that negative, since negative 1 is right here, and negative 2 is right here, negative 1 and 5 tenths must be halfway in between the two of them. Now I'm going to try my best to get this exactly in the middle to make sure it really is halfway. Because otherwise I would be representing a different number. And that looks pretty good. All right, our next number line. This is going by 2's. But I know my negative 1 is here, and negative 2 is here. So negative 1 and 5 tenths must be halfway in between those two points, so it should be right there. OK, my third one. Here's my negative 1. Here's my negative 2. So negative 1 and 5 tenths must be halfway between the two of them. And my last number line, again, I don't have negative 1 on here, but I know it's right there. 
and negative 2 is here, so it has to be halfway between the two of them. So it goes right there. All right, the decimal seemed nerve-wracking, but it actually wasn't too bad. Now what about negative one-fourth or negative a quarter? Oof, all right, this one. When I think of negative a quarter, I know that that is one-fourth of the way between zero and negative one. One-fourth because this fraction means it's divided into four. So if I look at my zero and then I look at my negative one, I know that negative one-fourth has to be a quarter of the way. So a half will be right here, so that means a quarter would be about right, not quite there, a little bit more this way, right there. So that means negative one-fourth, oh, I just erased it, is right there on my number line. Oh, this one's tricky, let's try the next one. So it's again between zero, which is here, and my one, my negative one. Negative one-fourth is gonna be a quarter of the way between this space here. So one quarter of the way would be about right there. Or if you divided it into four sections, this would be the first of the four sections. Let's do another example. We have zero here and negative one here. My negative one-quarter would have to be about right there. Okay, my zero is here, my negative one is here. Negative one quarter would be about right there. And that's it for negative one quarter. So it looked pretty complicated, but hopefully you could see it was a lot simpler than you thought. All right, these ones are a little bit harder. They're harder because we don't have as many numbers on the number line. So here it says plot negative six and negative two and five tenths on the number line below. All right, let's try and figure out how much this is increasing by. I have negative 11 way down here and negative one here. Let's see, if I count by ones, will it work? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10, negative 11. So these spaces really are moving just by one. It's just that we don't have all the numbers marked on there. All right, that makes our job a little bit easier. We need to plot negative six on this number line. And I know negative one is way over here. So let me count down from negative one five spaces until I find negative six. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and negative six right here. So I put my point right there for negative six. All right, now we're doing negative two and five tenths. All right. I'm going to do this one in pink. Let's try and find it. Again, I've got my negative one here. Let's start with that one. So negative one, then I go negative two, and I go negative three. And I know negative two and five tenths has to be between negative two and negative three. And because it's in five tenths, I know it's halfway between. So that means negative two and five tenths would be right there on my number line. This next one below. Plot negative 30 and negative 33 on the number line below. Well, let's do, change my color here. Negative 30 we'll start with. So this is negative 34. Let's count and see how many times, how many spaces it's moving by to get to negative 24. One, uh, negative 34, negative 33, negative 32, negative 31, negative 30. Negative 29, negative 28, negative 27, negative 26, 25, 24. So again, we're moving by one space, which makes our job a little bit easier. Negative 30 has to be four down from negative 34. So we have negative 34, negative 33, negative 32, negative 31, and negative 30 goes right there. Now I'm going to make sure I get my point in the middle. Two dots. Okay, the next one is negative 33. Well, negative 34 is here, so that means that this right here must be negative 3, 33. Using the Educanon, or using edu on Educanon, you're going to enter what you think, where you think the blue dot is placed on the number line. Now you're going to tell me where you think A 
is placed on the number line. Now tell me where the blue dot is on the number line and the last one. Tell me where B is on the number line. That's all for now. I'll talk to you later.